Okay, you guys, I think we're back. And I'm just gonna put this up. Nice shot of my armpit. Just ignore that. Okay, we're back, yay! Thank you for bearing with us, Instagram. Is it, go is it? And everybody back at uh, Facebook, I hope it didn't reveal too many bad angles. Well, I mean, it was, you know, it was all over, <laughs> it was all over the right. place. Um, okay, so now here we are, and I'm with Jen Corday, and we were talking about your name, but let's move past that. Yes. Because I'm gonna call her Jen. Old news, call her whatever yeah, you Jen's call her. good. Um, so Jen and I, we go way back. She's been in the tub once before, but I don't know if I, we had talked about this then, but Jen and I actually met because Kathy DeBuono, we figured this out. Kathy DeBuono introduced us. Try. Right. When she was working on, we have to stop now. Exactly, web series. And Jen was doing music for them, right? Exactly, she needed some music. She knew I was a musician. I was Hello. working on Elena Undone. Mm -hmm. We needed music. And, uh, and we called Jen. And Jen gave us all the music for Elena Undone and wrote the Longest Kiss song. That's right. Which was... And Coming Undone. And um, what a great film to be involved with. It was awesome. I ended up having like five or, five or six songs in the film, so... Did you really? Yeah, it was like... Uh, just... I don't remember doing that many contracts with you. Right? <laughs> Jay, we worked as a producer, did the contracts. I got to know her. I loved working with her. And then I helped find them the rest of the soundtrack for that as well which is great because I love yeah we had a lot of good music in there and I think I I actually picked up to some of the artists Goddess and She going, going Jen forward. Foster I love it yes yeah yeah mm -hmm. it was really fun Rachel Sage but you know these this is the best thing I think about making film and you could probably say it about a lot of other things too but when you're when you're working on projects you get to meet really interesting people and then make friends with really interesting people and then actually get to work with your friends Oh, I love it. I then, decided as I, though, the older I get too, I just want to do projects that are with people I like. I mean, because yeah. life is short and you, and it's so much more fun when you're making art with your friends. Yeah. Oh, it's or so much more people. fun. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been on, so, so now it's been a while. Yeah. I mean, now it's been uh, an Apple ever vacation. Not now, thank you. Um, that was 2010? 2010 or 2011. And then Jen did music super was my music supervisor on Meth Head, and then she was my music supervisor on Crazy Bitches, mm -hmm. and then now Crazy Two, and my short film that I just did with Carrie. That's right. And I even used a piece, of, I used some music from an artist that you turned me on to for my VR project. So, yeah, we our our music lives are completely yeah. wrapped up together. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, if you if you don't blink, Fiona, Gail, Trish, and Melissa, hi you guys. Um, if you don't blink at the end of Crazy One, you will see Jen. Oh. She was like, I have to have a okay. role. You have so to give I me a begged role. So I begged her for a small part <laughs> in Crazy Bitches One, and she said, all right, I can play um, police officer. So I'm super excited, <laughs> and I've been pra I practiced, like, you know, the whole time. She I had one line, and she was oh my god, that was right. There was the body bag, something about body bags. Or is that the line we that ran out of body bags, uh, but the line got cut. So but I said, okay, you just say yes, sir. And so my line <laughs> ended up being yes, sir. Uh, but it was super fun. I felt really powerful as a cop. I thought maybe I had a career there. You know, I'm kind of tall. I'm 5'8", and I, I, I had the I thought you pulled off cop real well. The baton well. and the whole thing, and I... I totally bought her, which is why I was, I was kind of surprised. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to do this, but okay. But then you showed up with the whole uniform. Yeah, hair back in a bun. She totally kind of sold it's it. It's my butch self. Yeah. Totally sold it. And then I did have to cut most most of it. I don't remember why. Not because she wasn't any good. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't. But I made But watch I made Crazy Bitches me. 1. Look for me. I'm in the background a lot. And I, you know, I'm in the background in the crime scene. I don't want to give and, it away. And then, and then you get in the car and your baton got caught in the door. Oh, yeah. She's like, you have one thing to do, Jen. Just get in the car, shut the door, drive forward, and turn off the AC so it doesn't interfere with the audio. No, I shut the door on my billy club. <laughs> boom. And it bounces, and you can kind of hear it. Like, the audio goes boom. <laughs> they have to do it again. Then they do it again. I forget to turn off the AC. Hey, take three. I nailed it. I, you know, I used the clip uh, with the baton. I just oh. cu I cut out before you See? actually get in the car. Like, Sometimes. No. It was just the only one that didn't oh. that fit in the cut the way I was cutting. But you know, you make you make do, and it was fine. 
Anyway, it's that a was good blooper. My... And then when we went on to Crazy 2, I was like, I have to write you a real role because you actually can act. So I got a real part this time. Yeah. Bess, Bessie. And uh, I hope you funny. guys tune She's in. She's really funny. If you haven't seen Crazy Bitches season two yet, when you do, I don't think I'm overselling her. I think she's hysterical. Well, thank you. It, I thank you. And I, I I, do really connect. For the small part she is, I have a big backstory on her. Uh -huh. I know. I love this. She's got a southern accent. And um, she, does. she She um, rides horses and she drives a truck. My character. Yeah. And um, she wears boots. I borrowed my boots from Hope. Thank you, Hope, if you're watching, for lending thank me you, your Hope. boots. And thank you, Who lent us Sherry, the truck? Sherry. 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 For All right. the truck, and uh, I got better at driving the truck. There, we had a little bloopers on that too. And then I drive home after we shot the whole day. I drove home back towards uh, Long Beach with the fake license plates on the truck. Oh, Mickey and Jen. Mickey loves. Huh? Loves what they do. Well, know. hello, you guys. I can't read his handwriting, but you know I love you all. <laughs> so. No, yeah, so she takes yeah, off, right and everybody panics. So they call me. I was literally way uh, uh, an hour down the road, and I had to turn around and come back. I didn't think it was a big deal. They put on fake license, just so you know. If you have a car in a movie, they give you fake plates. So they had swapped them out, and then I forgot to swap them back again. So I was driving home with the fake plates, and they're like, it's a felony. She's turn like, oh, I'll come, I'll come back I'll come tomorrow. tomorrow. It's a big deal. We're like, no. And by the way, you didn't forget to swap them. They forgot to swap See, them. It was not you. your responsibility. It was other people's responsibility. Oh, I don't think I ever told you this, but then they did. They, so we met on the side of the road, actually. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, they met yeah. us halfway. Swapped the plates, and then I drove her home and gave it back to my friend, who was very gracious to lend it. A week later, she realizes they, they, were, they were reversed. Or, I don't know. They were upside down. So they got put on back. Wrong. The plates were on wrong? Oh, man. I don't know how to do plates. But anyway, oh, yeah, yeah. we came out okay. It was great. And I sent her a big old swag. She loved it. You guys, swag if you box, join the so. Crazy Bee Nation, um, I'm telling you, there's fun, there's fun stuff. There's the Crazy Bitches hat. I have one. Anyway, please check out the season. I don't want to give it away my episodes, but... One and eight. I'm in the beginning and the end. <laughs> <laughs> but when we get to season three, you'll have more. I'm gonna have you're gonna have a whole competition with Honey's old manager who wants her back. Ooh, I like it. This is the first time hearing of this, you guys. Yes. This is this is where this is going, so we'll see. But in the meantime, we did go out and shoot a music video today. That's right. Because I don't know if you've seen season one, which is the recut feature, I had to replace a piece of music. I had Crimson and Clover in there. Uh, which was a re-recording that uh, my friend Edith Crash did, and um, I couldn't afford it. Uh, so Jane and I are always just to, just to give you a little backstory, yeah. looking for music that's licensable. And if any of you are indie musicians, you know, yeah, because it, it costs a fortune to get some of these songs that are super yeah. popular. And when you're trying to make an independent film, it's yeah, you can't do and, it. and you know, I made the mistake on that first on the feature. I use it as temp music so you guys when you're when you're editing you need attached. to put some music in there so you kind of get a rhythm you can edit you edit a little bit to the music at times you want to get a sense of a feel of what you're looking for and you have to be careful because you do get attached and I got yeah. I put Crimson and Crimson and Clover in there by Pat, um, a Joan Jett just as a placeholder and then I fell in love with it. I'm like, I can't take it out. I, don't, I like, I cut to it. I right. don't know what it's else I'm gonna put in there. It's hard to find a replacement. Oh. Okay. And so yeah. I ended up overpaying for the rights, for the publishing rights, so that I could get somebody else to record. Right. And it's not even using the uh, recording of the yeah. Jet version. You have someone else do it, but you still have to pay for the underlying song. Right. So, so I did that, yeah. but I couldn't. So anyway, when I redid it, I couldn't use it. So I went to Jen, I'm like, oh, I gotta need help. And we did try to look at other things, you know, but finally yeah. she's like, you know, I have this song. I had this song, Tear Into You. You hadn't done anything with it, it yet. Slow. It was still new. Yeah, it was just an idea, I think, yeah. You sent it to me and you were like, what about this? And I was like, you're like, you need, I need it softer. I need, she's really good at explaining. And just, we try to just use adjectives to help each other seek out 
the mood we're going for with the music and um, sometimes you know it's a lot of trial and error and it's a lot of no's from her but I can't I just keep sending her stuff you know and she's like oh you're way off and then, <laughs> and then you know and then I but I okay 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 you know how about this so but what's great is we yeah, yeah. we eventually yeah. get there and this song, yeah, so we we kind of tweak the lyrics yeah. and slow it down. She's like, what down. about this? I'm like, well, I don't know. And like, it's just, this is a, a girl's first time with another woman. It's got to be softer. And she's like, well, I'm like, can you just, like, let's slow it down. And then I'm like, the tear into you is just a little. Tear into you. And so I said, I was like, I want to crawl into you. Which is, I want to feel you from the inside. Yeah. And I want to see what it's like. So the lyrics changed some. The tempo's slowed down. It's softer. It's beautiful. It's very melodic. Yeah. Um, anyway, it's in season one. I think it's episode five with the mini um, Cassie love scene. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if you call it a love scene if they're not actually making love. They're just kissing. But you know, you, you know what I'm saying. It's an attempt. But it's really beautiful. So we went out. I'm going to cut a little video together using some footage from the film and. And we just shot this today, so I'm excited. We're fresh off the uh, press here. And it was, you know, like everything I do is so low rent in terms of like we went by ourselves. And halfway through, I'm like, ah, oh, Jen's like, yeah, we could have used another person. I'm like, yeah, we could have. We're trying to hit play, trying to, you know, I'm walking with the guitar. Oh, right. She says, bring hiking shoes. This is, you know, I'm a, so I'm like, all right. So we hike out, then I change it to the scene shoes. Anyway, we hang the speaker from a tree so we can hear the, uh, so I can lip sync. And she wants to get to where no one will bother us, but then this guy comes through. Yeah. This ranger came along. I mean, what are the chances? We're like way, way out in the middle of nowhere. There's nobody else on the path. And this guy comes along and he's talking on the phone. He's I thought it was a cop. Zucchini. I mean, what was he talking about? It's a ranger. He was talking about a zucchini. You'd hear him talking to his friend. About his barbecue this afternoon. Yeah. yeah. I was or, like, or something. Zucchini. Anyway, he came along and we were like, oh, hi, and then sort of chatting him. And at one point he's like, so this is a non-commercial shoot, right? You're just doing this for yourselves, right? Because he wanted a permit. No, because he wanted us to say the right thing so he didn't have to ask for the permit. Oh, is that? Okay, okay, yeah. okay. okay. Good, he good, was good. trying to hint to us. And then he's like, because like, I'm in a band. Like he knew, like he understood what we were doing. And he also is a ranger, so he has to be careful. But he also plays in a band, and so we got his car, and he plays drums, and who knows, you know, like, life. I never knew where I'm gonna meet my next drummer yeah, yeah. Uh, as a ranger on the trail in the Hollywood Hills. Yeah. Apparently, he's a good rock drummer, so I got his card. Yeah, we'll see where that goes. <laughs> got his card, got a download for one of his songs. We'll see, we'll see. I don't know, but that's like how life goes, right? I mean, it's so random, so random. We were in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he chatted our ear off, and we finally had to get back to business and finish the shoot. But I think it went really well. Do you think I, it went yeah, well? Yeah, yeah, I do. I think, so. I think you did a great job. I think if I'm worried about anything, it's, I was using this. I was shooting on my phone, but I was using a Whatever little else. mini Steadicam rig oh, so yeah. that I could move. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't quite as steady, user-friendly as I had <laughs> hoped. Okay. Yeah. So we'll see, but there's stabilizers that you, you know, my editing system has stabilizers and stuff. Anyway, not to bore you guys with technicalities. I told but you about my homemade steady cam. Yeah. My friend 1L Michelle, hello, I'll get it, I'll, I'll give you the, her design. It's too late. Okay, well, anyway, <laughs> it's over. <laughs> too late now. Anyway, it's too late now, Jen. But um, anyway, so that was fun, and we'll see what happens. That should come out in a couple of weeks. And, um,. That's and then, you know, one of the things that popped up in our interesting conversation with the ranger is this idea of how musicians and filmmakers are, are sort of in the same boat these days. You know, it was for a while musicians were struggling because piracy had overtaken everything and, and then everybody was able to make their own music videos and make their own music and it just became very democratized, as they like to say, but... But then it means that there's a glut on the market of good and bad. Just saturation. Saturation. You know? and, and the technology, right, it, it, right, it was a double-edged sword. It made us, it, it's like so great that everyone has a home studio. And yet, it's so horrible that everyone has a home studio. Because, <laughs> right, yeah. you, everything is out there. And so it takes a lot to weed through and find you. Yeah, to find people. Find to them. find the work that you really like. And, and then as artists to be seen, you know, um, so, and 
film has just gone the same way. Like we're we're we are everybody can make a movie on their iPhone. Yes, we did shoot this on an iPhone this today, but and you can, but uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's good. But everybody can make an and make a movie. Everybody can release a movie. Is there a lot of bad movies out there? There's a ton of bad movies out there. Yeah. yeah. And then it just makes people gun shy. Like, do you want to spend money? To invest. Oh, well, you know what? I'll go to that movie with that person I know. You know, so they look for the names instead. I do the same. I'm just as guilty. But Right, right. Instead of, <clears throat> right, but just investing in a new face. Like, I, I always feel bad. I just went to, we were both at the Heart Joan Jett concert. Oh, yeah. We didn't realize, but I always feel bad. Actually, it wasn't in this instance, really. But it, when you go to those big concerts, there's an opening act and no one's paying attention. I'm always feel so bad for them. Too. It's like, God, this is such a great artist, and, and by the way, no one's even happen. listening. Or Ellie King. I thought there was, yeah. Ellie King. The lights are still. I know, the light. They don't even turn the house it lights down. It was still down. light up. They started early because it was seven eight seven p.m. So they started early because it was a three act show. So she had so, to go up in the in the daytime, daylight daylight and, it's, and people it's talk hard. for it. It's super hard to just get the attention, especially in original music, and then the attention span. You know, I just played the other day, just a quick story in a in a college at the the Nugget, Cal State Long Beach. But it, it is super hard to get attention um, from students that are so in their devices. You know. Oh, yeah. Do you, you look know. out? Do you look out and see people just just on you know, their buried? You know. Yeah, yeah. You know, and oh, once I do man. get their attention, and it's great, and I, you know, I think I had a successful show, but it's really a fight to, I think, pull people away from their their Facebook and their phones and. Yeah. And, and you have such a short attention span too, right? Right. Like, you gotta hook them in. Yeah. Quick. Yeah. Get to the crazy. chorus, Doris. That's what they say get in the songwriting. Get to the chorus, Doris. Like, if you don't get to the chorus in the next minute of seconds, you've lost a minute. It's just. It. No, it's true, and it's the same with film. And also, I find when, when I, there was you're good at that you, though. You hook them right from the beginning. You guys watch Crazy Bitches season two. Oh my God, you're gonna be hooked, hooked, hooked. It does. I do clip it, but I deliberately go like I know that I have to get people in a certain amount of time. It's great. But when I, I went to, um, I went to, I think it was Amazon. I went somewhere and I was just checking on my films, and there was a review of Method, and the guy said, "Oh, you know, I, nothing got going." And I was like, 15 minutes in, I was like, "What's gonna happen? Nothing's happening." And then he's like, "You know, I, ha I started multitasking because it was such a bad movie," and I was like, "How can you?" It's a bad movie. You were multitasking. You didn't watch it, you motherfucker. You know, I was like so Focus. mad. Focus. Listen, right. I don't mind you writing a review if you hated it. If you really watched it all the way through and you were like, I didn't get it, or I felt this was not well made, or whatever your review is, fine. Sure. But you can't write my review is I watched 15 minutes, decided I didn't like it. It's not fair. Kept it on, but multitasked through it, and now think it's a horrible movie. Like, you can't do that. That's it's not, not fair. cool. But yeah, it's frustrating. You. No, you're very good at grabbing them. Um, so please check it out. It, it's I fun. It it's just super day. fun. Yeah, season one and season two, you have a knack for that. So, and I think it, I think it suits itself well to being a series mm -hmm. here. Yeah, even more too. so than the movie, because it's quick episodes where you just it's just fun. It's a fun ride. It's a it, you're not yeah. yeah click in yeah yeah. Well, you 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 need it to keep going because you need best to come back with a bigger role. Yes, please. Yeah. You guys, come on. Season three, I need a bigger role. Please yeah. support yeah. it so I have a bigger role. <laughs> so I, I think that what you do, it's a little bit like, uh, I've had some stand-up comics on the show as well, and I admire stand-up comics because I find that concept terrifying that it's just you uh. and you're up there and you're either funny or you're not uh. funny and the audience is very vocal about it. And, and I feel like musicians, it's the same thing. You know, you're up there by yourself. Even if you have a band, you're the front of the band. So everybody's really staring at you. It's, and and it's yeah. you. You're not a character. Right. Or do you put on a persona? Like, do you give yourself some sort of... Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. You know, I think I make... I have several personas, I think. You know, as a musician, I have my original self and my original career where I do my original songs. And that's a much more vulnerable place to be. And for that reason, I probably don't do those shows as often because it is, yeah. you know, I want to be in a safe place and I want the, the lighting to be good and I want yeah. people to be kind of listening. Yeah. But mainly I make a living, you know, playing some cover songs and I, I have my band Classic Rock Revolution. Check them out, classicrockrevolution.com. 
And behind the camera, we'll put it up. Yeah, classicrockrevolution.com. I have three boys in a band. We have so much fun. And I just have fun in that band. I can let loose. It's not, I'm not representing my own, you know, personal song, so I don't quite feel as vulnerable because I'm, you know, I'm playing ACDC and Bon Jovi and Led Zeppelin, having a great time. People know the lyrics are singing along with you. So it, it's a really fun show. We wear wigs. We, we, <laughs> I wear a Joan Jett wig. We're, we That's don't take funny. ourselves too seriously. It's really fun. Yeah, yeah. But, um, and then I have a Melissa Etheridge tribute I just started, and that's kind of interesting. MelissaEtheridgeExperience.com. I just realized that a lot of my friend musicians are in tribute bands. They make good money, yeah, play tribute. casinos, and I, so I was like, you know, I could do Melissa. So that's been, you know, I straighten my hair, I try to get the look that she has and do all her songs. And, and that's fun too. We have a show coming up at a casino here in October. Yeah. But you work all the time. I mean, oh, every honestly, weekend. I think it's really, that's also very impressive to me because there's a lot of musicians out there that, I mean, they're writing and they're, you know, they're trying, but their their stage time is not that much sporadic. Or, yeah, yeah. I know, I have the opposite like working problem. Every weekend. I'm like, at the point, I'm like, I gotta say no to these shows so that I can just go back into studio mode and be more creative and do my original self. And that's really what I want to do, and I want to do more videos, and I've been talking to Jane about that, and I think videos is the way to get your music out there, because people, they don't want to just listen, they want to see you, so I think YouTube is the place to go when you want to hear a song, don't you want to, don't you go there? Yeah. You hear a yeah. new artist, you go to YouTube, you don't, yeah. you don't really go to yeah. iTunes, and, you want and, to see, you know, you want to see, you what do, they want to, like I mean, or, I hate to like demand that somebody go out and make a video, but you can make them pretty cheaply. Yeah. But I do want to see the, the person. I mean, it's like it. I love when I can see the person actually singing their own song. So even if, like we were saying earlier, like even if they're just sitting on a couch. Yeah. Like we were talking about this shoot we were doing today. I'm like, I just decided to strip it down and make it really super basic because, well, a, I didn't have any. I hate saying that. I say that all the time, you guys. No, but we just decided we were going to go streamline. You can do cool stuff and on low budget too yeah. though. We had a beautiful, yeah. you have a gorgeous backdrop here. Yeah. So we went out in the woods. We went to the woods, went to a park. But uh, yeah, and you can get creative. But also I think that ultimately people just like to see the artist, see how they're feeling as they're singing the song. And then you kind of hear the song better because you can see it being you sung. You connect, exactly. I mean, I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but that's, I, like, I'm... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're from Phoenix or Southeast? Oh, right on, thank you. I love, I've done Phoenix Pride several times and, you know, have a bit of a following there. I'd love to hit Phoenix again. Let me know where I should play, please, if you've got, you know, some connections. Or and, favorite uh, places that you like that she could reach out to. And Southeast, of course, Florida. I've done a bunch of cruises lately, you know, going out of um, Fort Lauderdale and Tampa, speaking of Southeast, but I'd love to, I'd love to get down around that whole area. Um, I'm, November, I'll be doing a cruise, a country cruise. I'm a pretty versatile artist, so now I'm gonna beef up some of my country songs, and I'll be. I would I'll be doing that I could totally see that. Yeah, yeah. You can put, put your my hat on. Southern accent in there. Southern accent. And, and uh, so we yes, have all those cowboy boots. If you want to go, countrycruising.com. Countrycruising.com. Country cruising. Yeah. And we'll stop in Key West, and I don't know Bahamas is on the stop, but I'm the hurricane. Ooh, you know? I don't know. Hopefully, we'll bypass that, but. Please, you know what? If you want, if if you have a bar or an idea, I'm I'd love to get your email, mm -hmm. Corday at Corday.net, and we'll talk about that at the end. Yeah, but hit me up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, we are, you know, sort of winding down. I I did wonder, like, uh, one of the things I was curious about, if you have a story about the funniest thing that ever happened to you on stage. That you least expected. Like, for instance, I, I, I was doing a stage play. Yeah. And, in fact, my friend Kirk, who's staying with me right now, uh, was in this play with me. And uh, there was a gun in the scene. And the character picked up his coat and the gun fell out. It was a rubber gun, so it bounced. Doink, doink, doink. So that was, like, like things like that happen, like, live stage things. Yeah, it just bounced. And in theater, you can't. No, you're just like, oh. That's the thing about film, you, you say cut, you know. Yeah. And with live um, stage, you just Stuff gotta go happens. with it. Yeah, you gotta yeah. go with it. Okay, so I guess I have to go with, um, so on the ro classic rock show, I like to change the costumes, you know, mid-show. Which, you know, there's a risk to that, always. I have, mm -hmm. I try to put the hairband on my wrist, so I know it's always there, and then I run backstage and I, psh, 
put it up and put on a Joan Jet wig and anyway and then but I had this idea to change bras. Oh no. So I was gonna wear two bras. And then one on top of the other? Right. Yeah. Because the one starts it has spikes. And I start with the Ozzy Osbourne, you know, badass. Sorry. <laughs> And then um, I, I uh, do it. Oh, I wanted to do it on stage because it would be more sexy. Oh, right, right. So yeah. I, you know, every girl knows how to take a bra off, off with your shirt on. It's fine, but yeah. when you have two, it's very tricky if they get tangled uh, one under the other. Yeah, yeah, I imagine. So, uh, did you have a. Both were coming off, and then both, and then they were both like just hanging out. <laughs> it was just incredibly awkward. Oh, that's funny. I think they were both just hanging here, um, tangled around themselves, and I just had to. The show must go on. So that's the lesson. What did you live. do? Did you take them I both off? Say, no, I think I just had them both. They're both off in my armpit. <laughs> it's hard to be sexy at that point, uh, but you just go with it. Yeah, you just go funny. with it. Yeah. Fans are great. Fans are forgiving. It's it's about I don't I don't take my I have fun on stage. If you ever come to my shows, I'm about involving the audience, singing along. Yeah, you're fun. You you're know, fun, you're fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. So it's not. Yeah, you, you don't have to be perfect. In fact, I want this is why I got this tattoo. It doesn't matter. That's good. I I use it all the time because I think anxiety is a big thing these days, and especially with artists when you're under a microscope and you're on stage and you're under the lights and you're worried about your age or your makeup or you, you know especially as women mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter and I it was my mom's last words which is kind of incredible really? and my dad told me this story later I didn't even know till years after she had passed but, it, but I was like it's really kind of profound well, what happened what, what, what happened I mean he was just you know she was she had she died of cancer but in the in the final days when it, it's hard to even speak he's like I, what are you trying to say and she's like oh it doesn't matter and she said it very peacefully yeah, like yeah, yeah. like it, it's just some trivial thing that yeah. she wanted to tell him but in the in the big scale of life that's beautiful uh, I think that's and I beautiful. thought yeah as she's passing away passing that on to it yeah. to me I think was yeah. a good thing for me to hang on to I think we it's really important I, I was talking to my friend yeah. Marina today and I was like you know I'm trying to um, just because so many things go wrong oh. in the course of a day, in the course of a week, and I'm yeah. Catalina Island saved a life. Oh, well, there's a Catalina Island Women's Weekend, and so I, if they're talking about that, I hope to bring this back. But Catalina Island Women's Weekend, and um, Andrea Meyerson is a friend of mine who's a promoter who is not doing it anymore, but I hope. To take it over and that we're gonna do I just think it's such a beautiful place people don't realize that live in LA that Catalina I've never is been. amazing <coughs> I've actually so never been. Lynn said you saved a life on stage oh did you tell that story oh Everyone's did you save a life oh well I I don't know what, what they're referring to you there I mean I maybe it's just that your music saved somebody's life just well yeah I had a friend that went to Catalina Island weekend it ended up taking her own life, and that was one of the last times I saw her. Uh, so that's kind of heavy. I don't know if you're talking about that. And her name was Lynn. Um, I just think it's huge right now today, um, depression and anxiety yeah, and yeah, suicide. So this all ties into letting well, it go, and it doesn't yeah. matter. Enjoying your your body, your, your wherever you're at, making art. It's never good enough. You know, you can never finish yeah. the final mix. Yeah. But put it out there. Or, you know, it's always going wrong just to get it out. And, and, yeah. and I, you know, and, and that, yeah. And so I was just saying, I was like, I've just gotten to the point where what I'm trying to do is just say, I can't work 24 7. I get the work done as best I can get the work done. Never enough time in the day, I know. And it doesn't matter. Like, it'll all, I don't, I'm now going to use those words because yeah. those are profound. But I, it, it, I just keep saying to myself, it's okay. Just let this go. Just. Get up tomorrow and do more. Get up tomorrow and just start again. Whatever you got done today, it's because hard. it's fine. And also, you have to live your life. You have to make decisions to go out and do things and see your friends and participate and, uh, and in I, the world. Oh my you God, know? right? That is my biggest um, lesson in the last couple of years since my partner Lisa. It's been a joy, and she's really taught me to enjoy. Because I used to just be work, 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 work. You know, and you got to take that. That you know, if your life is a pie. That, that time yeah. of your me time and your 
Yeah. 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 I agree. Well, on that note, uh, man behind the camera is doing the wrap up sign. Oh, we haven't got to the um, or the like your massively overtimed sign. I don't know. Um, I forgot to talk about our haircuts. What kind do you have? Oh, <laughs> I think I've got an afro. Oh. We're talking about the top 10 okay. uh, pubic styles. I don't know. I thought it was called, uh, I thought one was ba ba Baby in the Woods, but apparently it's Brazilian. Babe in the, wo or Babe in the Woods uh, is Brazilian or hardwood floors. And then you have the landing strip, the bush. There's a, um, I didn't know there's a martini glass. What is a martini glass? Well, it's a combination it's of the triangle and the landing strip. Uh huh. It makes a martini glass. I, you know, I can barely go down to get my nails done. Like I don't even like I to hear do that. You, girl. So go in and Whatever get somebody got, to do like pubic trims. I can't. I don't have the time. Some people I hear do a braid. There's a no. punk rock. No, no, I know, I know. Oh I'm God. just trying to tell you what's out there. Um, there. There's was a this punk in Marie rock. Claire's? <laughs> I <laughs> googled it. I don't know why. I was just fascinated about the popularity of the U.S. and and the world, but yeah. in the world. The bush is still number one, I think, yeah. pretty much, yeah. Well, I thought everybody but was going back to the sort of au natural sort of thing because right. of the... it's back in. And the under, you growing your hair under your arms it's back. back in, and yeah. Like, yeah. I don't think it matters. I truly think that men... Whatever... Like, and women. I don't want to... I don't know. I can't speak for women so much. Just trim the middle, right? Just yeah, you get a nice and clean. But most, most men don't, like, offered to them, will take it. If it's... If the rest of the package is attractive... Oh, They'll deal whatever with whatever's going you on down there. Is like, <laughs> sure. it's just the entrance to the to heaven, you know. So like, they'll get in there anyway. The they entrance to. to heaven. My new song coming soon. <laughs> I dare you. And then we'll do a music video, and then we'll bring you guys along for the music video. Entrance to heaven. <laughs> La. Say Brian Adams song. Or song. <laughs> okay. Anyway, okay, we gotta wrap up. So tell everybody uh, where would you like them to find you. Please find, uh, find me at corday.net. Really easy. I just used my last name. Uh, you can also do jennifercorday.com. But as we discussed, I just go by Corday. So corday.net. And of course, I'd love to be your friend. And I'd love for you to like me. Facebook, Jennifer right, Corday. Instagram, Jennifer Corday. So full name, Jennifer Corday. So um, I hope to see you there. And come see a show. I play all over the place. I'm Inland Empire. Yeah, one of the great so things about beautiful. following her and also checking out her website is that you'll know where she's going to be. Uh, so if she goes outside of L.A. or the L.A. Long Beach area, she could be coming near you or to you, and then you'd have an opportunity. She is I a lot of fun. near you. If you come up and say, I would like the entrance to heaven, <laughs> you can be near her. <laughs> but oh, not no. too near because she has a girl and she's massively in love. So, oh, bye. Um... So I loved having you on. I loved our photo shoot today. We had so much fun. Our film shoot. No, look going. that way. What? What? Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Anyway, uh, yeah, and these two people like were trying to make muscles, and we were like exhausted after a 15-minute hike. It was ridiculous. Um, uh, I love you all for coming. For those of you that don't know, you can find all the information on Crazy Bitches at crazybitchesdigital.tv. You can find me at Director Jane Clark on Instagram and Facebook and Director under, D-I-R underscore Jane Clark on Twitter. And I hope to see all you guys next week. I do not know who my guest is. I know that Carl Landler will be coming up, but won't be another, it'll probably be another week or two. So I don't know who's coming, but it'll be somebody delightful. So I hope to see you all at, uh, and for those of you that don't know, we're also on, if you're on Instagram, we're at the crazy bee nation on the Facebook and you'll, the event page goes out there and you can find everything there. Love you guys. Thank you. And 